when she was uh, going I, across the I country. I would lose my clavicle to that attempt. Yeah. We I, have a friend of mine here uh, who I've known now for years. And as everybody says that there are all these anti-war movies made in Hollywood and distributed, uh, he's the one. He's the one guy who made it around the system. He fought and clawed his way uh, to get it out there. And Samuel Goldwyn distributed the film. Uh, you always find the name Gary Sinise next to good works that relate to the troops. He helped to produce it. But Jake Rademacher went there to, to follow his brothers, Joseph and Isaac, to show the good work that they were doing uh, in Iraq. And, and it's an amazing award-winning film. Brothers at War, you got to go and buy Brothers at War. Go to Amazon.com, go to Google, find it, buy it. You won't regret it. Welcome, Jake, my good Yay, friend. Yay, thank, thank you, Jake. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Glad Thanks for today. coming to the show today. We really appreciate it. You've, you've joined us last year. Were you there the year before? It's kind of... I may have been. I think, I think so. You, I think you've been with us all three years that so. we've had. I remember definitely last year I was yeah. there. I think I was there even before as well. Yeah, Troopathon has been uh, very grateful for your contribution. That movie that you made is amazing. And you, of all people, know how much care packages mean to our troops, and more importantly, the support and expression of admiration from those of us back home. Yeah, and I think right now is a great time to be showing them some support. Uh, you know, especially in Afghanistan right now, the troops are really in the middle of a very tough fight. Um, you know, I saw Restrepo recently, which, which did a good job of showing what they were up against in 2007, and now uh, under the leadership of Petraeus and McChrystal, who unfortunately got replaced, um, you know, they did a great job of flooding that area with troops. And, uh, you know, I think we just passed a thousand casualties in Afghanistan, yes. uh, which is... It's been some of the bloodiest fighting uh, since the war began. Right. Uh, the, the largest number of NATO forces uh, were killed about three weeks ago. And the reason why that is is because they are actively taking the fight to the enemy. Yeah. Uh, in the past, they were kind of in a holding pattern. We had a huge thing going on in Iraq, uh, as everyone knows. We, we essentially won that war. Um, there will continue to be violence in Iraq, there will be, continue to be issues, but you know, the economy in Iraq is booming, things are going extremely well in Iraq. Iraq is in a place you almost couldn't have foreseen a couple years ago. Well, and certainly now, not a place that anybody on the American left predicted would take place uh, a few years ago. Well, I do remember a, a certain senator standing up on the floor of Congress and saying, you know, the war in Iraq is lost. lost. Yeah. And uh, apparently he was wrong. How's he doing in the polls in Nevada? <laughs> You're more an expert on that than me. He's not doing I think all the that American well. people noticed that. I mean, that is extraordinary uh, to see that we did win. It's extraordinary to see that the people uh, who paid to promote the idea that General Petraeus was General Petraeus, and now they're heralding him uh, as the guy who's going to come in and save the day. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, they even recognize. That, that he is fighting the tough fight out there and that we cannot afford to win. And we cannot afford to win even if you disagree with the President of the United States. He's the Commander-in-Chief. You've got to be behind him, and we have to win this war in Afghanistan. Uh, I agree with you 100%. I mean, three years ago when we first sat down, you know, if we said, if I'd said to you, you know what, I predict in 2010, the Vice Presidents of two different administrations are going to be fighting over who gets credit for what's <laughs> happened in Iraq. You just said, Jake, Come on. Uh, I love you, but mm -hmm. you're a little bit more of a dreamer than you need to be. Well, I would might have questioned whether or not you were doing drugs or very minimum some alcohol involved. Yeah. But exactly. Right. And for me personally, when I saw that, I was a little aggravated because having been there, having seen the work firsthand these guys are doing, uh, these men and women that serve us, it's neither vice president. It's the people serving, the people that are overseas right now, the people that are on their second deployment, third deployment. Yes. It's the families back home. Yes. They deserve the credit. You know, let's pay it where it's due. And those same folks are now in Afghanistan. And the reason why there's so many casualties in Afghanistan is that's where, I hate to say this, where all the trash in the world is right now. Yeah. If you want to get your jihad on, you're in Afghanistan. And uh, we are, uh, the, the entire NATO coalition forces is actively taking it to those people. And the way you mark victory is, you know, empowering the people. I, I came across a very interesting statistic the other day. Uh, we're doing a little thing for July 4th to help raise money for Gary Sinise's charity that gives school supplies to kids. And um, I'm sure a lot of the school supplies that are in these bags are going to end up in the hands of kids uh, overseas. The literacy rate in Afghanistan has gone from 10% at the beginning of the war to 28% now. It means almost three times the number of people can read and write than they could 10 years ago. came across another interesting statistic. 
Uh, the number of people, Afghanistan civilians that have been killed since the beginning of the war is 16,000, which is a huge tragedy. Uh, the decade before we got there, when the Taliban was in charge, 400,000. Oh my wow. gosh. Civilians. Wow. I, I really did not know that. No. I actually came across as a director of Restrepo, which is another great film, um, mentioned that Friday night. I was at his, at his opening. And, you know, it just, we, we tend to lose sight of that. We tend to focus a lot on, on, on the death count and on things like that. But I think that sometimes we take away from acknowledging what these service members of ours have done is truly extraordinary. They truly have provided a better way of life for the people in Afghanistan and in Iraq. They are making the world a safer place. And I'd love, I mean, I'm glad we're doing this today, not only to, to send them something that says, hey, we recognize that you're doing extraordinary work for us, and thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, there is something extraordinary about when they are watching CNN and they are watching the news and it comes back that uh, they're affirming that we're the bad guys somehow. What ends up happening is that our warriors end up having to be also humanitarians and ambassadors of America on the ground. They're not trained necessarily. They're trained to kill. They're, they're America's killing machines, and they're out there to get the jihadists. But at the end of the day, what helped to win the surge was their humanitarian work on the ground. And when they get those packages, uh, in all likelihood, they're going to be giving away half of the stuff to the to the people to show them their good faith. I, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Andrew, because um, before we go to break, I wanted just to close out this segment by first thanking you, Jake Rodemacher. But um, one of the items in our um, care.